This is Dangerous 30, a video series chronicling every detail in the construction of Michael Jackson's most ambitious musical triumph, Dangerous, honoring the 30th anniversary since its worldwide release. Symbolizing a musical breakthrough with the shattering of glass, the album opener wastes no time announcing the King of Pop's furious return. In place of the pristine cinematic sound of bad is something more attuned to the real world and with a palpable sense of urgency. Beginning with Jam, the first disc of the record is dedicated to Riley's new Jack Swing influence. Lyrically, the song might sound simple enough on the surface, Michael Jackson often stating that he was only at one on stage, finding his own inner peace and using performance as a method to temporarily escape worldly issues. I have to find my peace, as no one seems to let me be. False prophets cry of doom. What are the possibilities? I told my brother there will be problems, times and tears for fears, but we must live each day like it's the last. Go with it, go with it, jam. Teddy Riley pilots this sense of freedom with an adrenaline-pumping rhythm consisting of electronic drum snares, turntable scratches, and hot horn stabs. In Riley's words, Jam was a track that Michael had the idea for. He told me to see what I could do with it, so I took it and created some more instruments and reproduced the record. And he loved it. Ironically, having rejected Quincy Jones's idea of a Run DMC collaboration, fearing that rap music was on the way out, Jackson and Riley drafted in Heavy D, who had previously worked with Riley's group Guy and Sister Janet the previous year, to perform a rap verse in the song. It was my idea to get the rapper Heavy D to perform on there as well. He was Michael's favorite rapper at the time, recounted Riley. I swear to God, because I just did the record with Janet, so I was like, why would he want to do a record with me? I just did a record with his sister. It didn't seem, you know, and it, it just seemed so out of, you know, out of my reach, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So finally, it, after enough time, like the persistence that he kept up, I called Quincy and I was like, Quincy, can you call Michael? Because I've been getting messages that he was looking for me. And Quincy called me back like five minutes later. Said, man, are you crazy? This man been looking at you for a month. The video saw the meeting of the MJs, the other being basketball megastar Michael Jordan. In both their prime, the musical and sporting legends idolized by countless black youth growing up in the projects came together to flex their respective crafts. The concept was for Jackson to teach Jordan to dance and in turn, Jordan teach Jackson to dunk. He came to me about doing jam and I told him it was a touchy time because of the playoffs and he said that uh, basically he can work around my schedule. He talking about a guy who I admired ever since he was a child up until this point. You can see that when he's in front of the camera and his music is playing, it's like when I'm in front of the camera, I'm playing basketball. The video director, David Kellogg, remembers, we found this rat-infested, abandoned, bombed-out armory in a neglected neighborhood in Chicago. The production went into the neighborhood under the guise of a mayonnaise commercial. Neither the police nor the landlord really knew what we were planning. Michael Jackson arrived in a motorhome. We built a tunnel for him so he couldn't really be seen entering the building. He was followed shortly by Michael Jordan, who drove himself. As for filming the superstars together, there wasn't a whole lot of direction. It was easier just to play the music and let them go, either dance or play basketball. It was so loud that they couldn't really talk, so they had to let the music tell them how to behave. The disused urban location was befitting of the song's explosive chant-like tone. B-boys and B-girls are consistently featured throughout the video paying homage to the African-American and Puerto Rican youth who have originated so many styles of street dance, which was then perfected and tuned to fit the moves of the King of Pop. With appearances by Criss Cross and Naughty by Nature, this was Jackson's most visible attempt at crossing over into the hip-hop and rap genre which was now so influential in music of the 1990s. Seeing it as a potential vehicle to capture the hearts and minds of a wider, younger audience, at the same time being cautious not to veer too far from the 70s and 80s melodies his fans loved him for. Therefore, Epic Records commissioned two dozen remixed incarnations of Jam, created by seven remixers, placed depending on the radio station or club it was to be played at. We could give one version to everybody, said Michael Kaplan, Vice President of Artists and Repertory at Epic Records. 
but we live in such a specialized time and such a fragmented radio world that what we're doing is super serving our clientele. This meant club disc jockeys can spin a hip-hop remix while radio programmers fearful of irritating older listeners can choose a version that excuses Heavy D's rap section. Released as the second single from Dangerous, Remember the Time was often cited as Michael Jackson's return to his R&B roots and compared to his 1980 single, Rock With You. Written and composed by Teddy Riley, Michael Jackson and Bernard Bell, the breezy track was an attempt to connect Riley's new Jack swing sound with Jackson's more earthy romantic side. Riley recalled that Jackson's vocal delivery on this song really blew me away. He added, I came to the project with this track. That was the sound I was thinking of for this album. Basically, it was the sound I wanted on Dangerous, and he loved it. Loved it from the beginning. We finished Remember the Time, and I can remember him saying that this is going to be a smash. Because his terminology of smash is a record that is on the charts. That's more than five weeks, number one. That's a smash. Uh, that's a record that's on the chart. <laughs> for one week or two weeks, you got a hit. And that's how he describes a smash. The song's lyrics recount the pining for an ex-lover, with Jackson asking his romantic interest, over and over, to remember the special times they had together. Jackson never revealed who the song was written about, but Brother Jermaine has stated, that song was, as Michael told me, written with Diana Ross in mind, the one great love that, as far as he was concerned, escaped him. However, in the music video for the track, supermodel Iman would play the object of Michael's desire. And while Jackson had leading ladies in previous videos, including Thriller and The Way You Make Me Feel, this was the first time he shared a kiss on screen. The video for Remember the Time was filmed in January 1992 at the Universal Studios Hollywood backlot. Directed by John Singleton and choreographed by Fatima Robinson, Singleton was the hottest young director in Hollywood after the critical and commercial success of his 1991 film Boys in the Hood. However, the director stated that he would only take on the project if Jackson agreed to an all-black cast and production. A bold concept, but one Jackson was delighted with. Set in ancient Egypt, a time and place in history many have attempted to whitewash and erase the blackness of its inhabitants. The video presents black nobility with Eddie Murphy as an Egyptian pharaoh and Iman as his queen. Magic Johnson also makes an appearance in the video not long after his private struggles had just become public. Director Singleton remembered during an interview with Rolling Stone, Magic Johnson was going through this thing where he just revealed he had HIV. Michael said, we have to put Magic in this video. I'll always remember that. Michael Jackson first appears as a hooded wizard who enters the Egyptian palace and attempts to entertain the pharaoh's bored queen. Instead of juggling or eating fire, Jackson walks up to the steps to her throne and sings, asking if she remembers the time they were together. The pharaoh hardly appreciates this move and summons his guards. Jackson runs away to another room and begins an elaborate Egyptian-style choreography with the pharaoh's servants. In the video, Jackson is dressed in a costume made of gold satin. He wears golden chainmail, a white skirt with a dangling sash, black pants, and black boots. After a synchronized dance sequence, the soldiers corner the stranger. With nowhere to run, advanced special effects were used in the video as he disappears into a swirl of enchanted sand and blows away. Ending the elaborate production costing $2 million to produce and becoming one of Jackson's longest videos at over 9 minutes long. The final video premiered on ABC, NBC, Fox, and BET on February 2, 1992. The track was met with positive reviews, often linking the song to Jackson's earlier work. Chris Lacey from Albumism noted that the warmth and nostalgia of the song harkens back to Jackson's Motown roots. A reviewer from Cashbox noted, This smooth dance ballad sounds like it could have come from the Off the Wall album downplaying his signature whoops and shrieks in favor, a decidedly soulful and affecting vocal performance. Although the track received a fair amount of positive feedback, Remember the Time never lit up the Billboard Hot 100, like Riley and Jackson had hoped, peaking at number three. A disappointing result for the album's second single, Hot on the Heels after the controversy of Black or White, and while the record was still riding high in the album charts. 
More cynical critics pointed out the videos lack luster acting, characterized the middle-of-the-road tune as boring, and the video, as Mark Caro wrote in the Chicago Tribune, in other words, this music film is, sorry Michael, just a video. Thanks for watching. For our community members, we will also be sharing Archive Press articles featured, unedited video finds, early access to new installments, and much, much more as part of YouTube channel memberships. If you can, support us in the creation of content you enjoy on this channel by joining our YouTube community.